Force Touch has already been unveiled in the Apple Watch and the MacBook trackpad, and it's a heavily rumoured feature for the iPhone 7. It detects finger movements and distinguishes between hard and soft taps. I mean, anyone can do that, frankly. Degrees of pressure will effectively result in contextual menu pop-ups, depending on the strength of touch to use. In essence, this will allow developers to use an extra set of new inputs for allowing users to interact with their apps in new ways. For example, imagine a first-person shooter being able to tell if you want to launch a grenade or fire a gun simply by measuring the force of your tap. Given that Apple rarely upgrades their tech in ways that Samsung and other companies tend to, holographic projections for the iPhone 7 probably won't happen. I mean, maybe it'll happen for the iPhone 43S, but not for the next major iPhone. We'd think still, it'd shock everyone and it would be an amazing feature nonetheless. The ability to turn your iPhone into what would essentially amount to a tablet workstation would be a game changer, especially in the stagnated smartphone market. Hell, just give me a virtual keyboard that was made holographic, and I'd be satisfied. A keyboard for, for typing, you know, letters and stuff, not for playing jazz and funk. Although, actually, no, I want that more. I've changed my mind. Sapphire is the second most scratch-resistant material after diamond, and it was one of the most rumoured inclusions for the iPhone 6, but alas, it wasn't meant to be. It's the most durable display any smartphone could have, and it's one of the more likely features that the iPhone 7 may offer. The iPhone 7 may very well feature a 3D display, according to reports which claim that Apple supply chain partner TPK is working on a project that relates to naked eye 3D screen. In other words, a 3D screen that doesn't require glasses to see, like the Nintendo 3DS. Let's be honest, charging for all recent iPhones has sucked quite badly when compared to other Android smartphones, especially from Google and Samsung. Apple manages to make each new iPhone slimmer while equipping it with a faster processor and a graphics chip to also improve on battery life. The iPhone 6 was originally rumoured to have a front display made from sapphire glass, which would have made it possible to use it as a solar collector. This would allow you to put your phone into charge mode throughout the day. All you'd have to do is take a walk in the park at lunch just to give a boost to your battery. I mean, a walk in the park with your phone out, which might be risky depending on the park, and also you do need sunshine, which, if you're from England like me, you've got basically no chance of having any. But, you know, it would be fun. Here's hoping it comes to the successor. Another feature we'd like to see in the iPhone 7 is the device being waterproof. Apple has already emphasised health-related functionality in its mobile devices going forward, and it would be a logical move for the smartphone, enabling athletes to utilise it while swimming, etc. You know, go for a swim whilst checking Facebook? No, just me? Alright. Since the iPhone has no removable back panel, the ports should be the only thing that needs to be sealed off. And considering the fact the latest MacBook seems to be decreasing the number of ports and entries on it, maybe there just won't be any pretty damn soon. It's kind of annoying that Apple have never really upgraded the iPhone screen in terms of keeping up with the latest technology. With the iPhone 7, we're expecting the company to deliver a possible 4K iPhone 7 plus phablet, or at the very least, a quad HD iPhone 7 plus and a full HD iPhone 7. It all sounds like absolute nonsense to me, but they'll probably do that. One of those things. Phew, technology. What is this? The 1990s? Are we are we all back in the 1990s? Why haven't we got wireless stuff going? Wireless everything. Wireless energy, wireless happiness. Anyway, while basically every other smartphone in the world offers wireless charging, iPhone users have never experienced it. Well, not without, you know, big clunky add-ons anyway. The technology has come a long way in the past few years, and Apple, a company that has over $100 billion in the bank, should ideally invest in a now common feature that you see in many kinds of phones. We understand this being implemented in the iPhone 7 is a little bit far-fetched, but it's still a possibility, you know, after Apple created a patent for basically a joystick version of the Apple Home button. The button would essentially expand into a mini joystick that could be moved around in order to control various activities on the screen. This would target the massive iPhone game market, and it would be amazingly fun, too. You could have different types of games, maybe some games that weren't awful. 
The laser keyboard feature has been rumoured ever since the original iPhone was released. Imagine the iPhone 7 comes equipped with a laser keyboard and, better yet, a holographic projector. Now we're talking. It may be a long, long way away, but at least Apple acknowledges that there's some appeal here. They have a patent for a projected keyboard showing how the system might work with a laser projected keyboard built into an iPad. Maybe one day, my personal dream of playing Grand Theft Auto 6 anywhere via the iPhone 7 whilst playing jazz music on a holographic keyboard with a joystick feature and an inbuilt projector could become the reality that currently is just a dream. But knowing Apple and the fact that that's kind of ridiculous, probably not. Thanks everyone for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. For more top 10 lists, be sure to subscribe by clicking on the button that you can see now. YouTube, this is iPhone 7 recent rumors. What will the next iPhone be called? Will it be the iPhone 6s or iPhone 6c? If Apple sticks to its traditional naming, then it's more likely that the next iPhone will be called the iPhone 6s instead of the iPhone 7. Now let's talk about the specification of the iPhone 7. The screen size. 4.7 inches may be the sweet spot for the average Apple fan, but seems that Apple is going to include different sizes for the screen. Next, moving on with the design of the next iPhone, Apple has published a patent relating to such displays which hints at a future iPhone with a display that extends onto the sides of the device, providing interactive or touch-sensitive portions that give access to the slide to unlock functionality 
music player controls, messaging readout, color ID, system controls and much more. It's possible that Apple will use different materials to make the iPhone 7 more durable. There are words that the iPhone 7 will have a 3D display. The iPhone 7 could feature a 3D display in other words a 3D screen that doesn't require glasses to see. A very hot topic for the next iPhone will, will be the camera. When it comes to the iPhone 7's camera, latest reports suggest that it could offer a significant improvement over the camera found in the iPhone 6 and iPhone 6 Plus. In fact, this could be the biggest camera jump in the history of the iPhone. Daring Fireball's John Gruber recently said in a podcast on his blog that a source claims the iPhone 7's camera will have a two-lens system that could help allow users to capture DSLR quality imagery. A dual lens design offers a number of advantages over the present iPhone camera setup, including the option to add an optical zoom. It's also been suggested that future iPhone cameras will have better performance in low light conditions. Talking a little about its processor, the processors are expected to be manufacturing using a 14 nanometer design. The new chips are expected to be smaller, more efficient and of course more powerful. Most probably Apple is itself will design the A9 chips as it has done with A-class processor chips in the past. A very interesting new rumor for the iPhone 7 new feature is the joystick style home button for gamers. Essentially the concept of this is the home button of the iPhone 7 would be able to pop up on a little spring and turn into a sort of mini joystick for playing games. There are plenty of iOS games that would benefit from a hardware controller and this sounds like a lot of fun. A new charger for the next iPhone. In August 2014, rumors about a new iPhone charger emerged, suggesting that the USB part of the charger could be reversible just like the Lightning Connect. Imagine the USB being plugged into the adapter both ways, in the same way that the Lightning connector itself is reversible. iOS 9 is also likely to introduce new features at a software level. Among the features we're hoping to see iOS 9, improved parental controls, group FaceTime calls and split-screen application multitasking. And now about the release date, when is the iPhone 7 coming out? If Apple sticks to its traditions, we can expect the iPhone 7 to arrive in mid of September 2015. However, it's possible and has been widely speculated that Apple will begin releasing new iPhones twice a year to help it keep up with the ever-growing and ever-improving competition. This would mean an iPhone launch event in the spring of 2015 followed by another in the autumn. In this case, we would expect less dramatic enhancements in each update.